Hey guys, what's going on? The Comics Kid 2099 here. I am here once again to examine an issue of the X-Men. I am going back to the very beginning and I am talking about every issue of the X-Men. Today, I am examining X-Men issue 2, written by Stan Lee with pencils by Jack Kirby, with inks by Paul Reinman, and lettering by Sam Rosen. Uh, in this issue, the X-Men fight the Vanisher. Uh, he is a mutant with the ability to teleport and he uses this power to steal uh, the defense plans from the United States. And if the United States government does not pay him ten million dollars he will give the defense plans to the communists uh, the x-men uh, find out about the vanisher from professor x so they uh, do a training exercise which is basically uh, just an excuse to show the audience their powers kind of like it was in issue one and then they go to fight the vanisher and he gets away and the x-men all feel pretty down about this and professor x says uh, even though the vanisher got away you guys are pretty young and inexperienced so you did better than i thought you would uh, but now i am going to stop the vanisher so uh, they all go to washington dc where the vanisher plans on collecting his $10 million, and Professor X makes the Vanisher forget how to use his mutant abilities. And you have to wonder why Professor X doesn't do this more often. Anytime they face a bad guy, especially a recurring bad guy, why Professor X doesn't say, okay, you now think that you are a uh, peaceful pacifist and you're going to go over here and get a job with Habitat for Humanity or whatever. Uh, why doesn't he do that more often? I know that he doesn't do it uh, because the writers then wouldn't have a series. It would be very boring if Professor X did that in every issue, and they want the X-Men to act actually be victorious, but if he does it once, why doesn't he do it again? And you may be saying also, it's very unethical for him to do that, and that's true, it is, but it didn't stop him here, and it doesn't stop him from using his powers in unethical ways later on in the series. In fact, in the next issue, he's going to be doing some unethical stuff with his powers, or at least attempting to. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's kind of interesting that in this issue, the X-Men don't really do anything important. They're basically just superfluous to Professor X in this issue. He is the one who stops the bad guy, and the Vanisher does have some human henchmen working for them, uh, working for him, and uh, after he forgets how to use his abilities, these henchmen are like, well, let's go stop those X-Men, let's go fight them. And uh, then they have like a two-page fight scene with the X-Men, but other than that, uh, there's really not a whole lot uh, going on with the X-Men here. Uh, their powers are uh, basically the same. Uh, Jean Grey at one point lifts like 15 girls up into the air, and that's when uh, Angel tells her, uh, be careful, the professor told you not to lift more than what you can lift uh, with your own arms in real life. And uh, that's kind of funny that uh, she was able to lift the beast in the previous issue, and now uh, she suddenly gets faint whenever she exerts herself with her powers. Uh, and then you have, uh, at one point, Cyclops uses his uh, uh, optic blast to melt the ice off of uh, Angel's wing, because Iceman put some uh, ice on Angel's wings, and uh, that's something any Cyclops fan will tell you. Uh, he does not have heat vision. He has optic blast. It's force beams. Uh, but here, uh, they hadn't yet decided on that, uh, so they're kind of uh, doing something that's a little contrary to how Cyclops' powers are portrayed later, uh, where he does apparently have heat vision in this issue. And then uh, their personalities uh, really haven't been developed anymore since issue one. Of course, it's still very early yet, uh, but we're going to be seeing a lot of them kind of acting like one-dimensional, uh, not very developed characters for a while uh, to come. Uh, Iceman here, it's not that he's just the jokester. Uh, he acts very immature in situations where you would think that a 16-year-old would know better than to act that way. Uh, there's one point where they're having a very serious training session, and then Iceman decides to just start throwing snowballs at everyone. Or actually, he starts throwing snowballs when Professor X is telling them about the Vanisher. And then later, uh, Cyclops is saving Jean's life because she's about to be crushed by this giant ball thing that she was lifting with her telekinesis. And then Iceman says, well, any of us could have saved her. And he throws like this ice horse under Scott that kind of like knocks him off balance. And then uh, he does that a couple times in this issue. Uh, he's kind of irritating. Uh, I really can't wait for him to stop acting like a butthead like that. And then uh, Beast uh, still is not the science guy that he will be known as later on. Uh, he's still kind of acting like the big bruiser uh, that uh, is kind of like uh, the Thing or even the Hulk uh, in the Avengers comics. Uh, so uh, still uh, hasn't been refined into a version of the character that we will know him as later. And then the Angel uh, really doesn't do anything here, doesn't say a whole lot of anything either. He's just there, uh, kind of like Cyclops. Uh, really, uh, these two characters are very similar here. In fact, Cyclops doesn't even act like as much of a stick in the mud here as he did in issue one. Uh, there is one point, I think, where he kind of uh, yells at some of the other team members, but uh, really he doesn't act as uh, Cyclopsy in this issue as he did in issue one. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about this issue. Uh, it is interesting that uh, in the first uh, 25 or so issues, uh, that's what's collected in the Essential Uncanny X-Men Volume 1. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in getting the Essential Volumes, uh, there's the Essential Uncanny X-Men, which collects 1 through 25. Then there's also Essential Classic X-Men Volume 1, which collects the exact same material. Uh, they did this one a long time ago, 
early 2000s, I think. And then later on, they reprinted everything here and they just slapped a different cover on it, calling it Essential Classic X-Men. So if you're a little confused, uh, there's no worries. Uh, you can buy Essential Classic X-Men issue one or volume one or Essential Uncanny X-Men volume one. Or you can buy the newer Epic collections, which collect fewer issues and are a lot more expensive because they are in color. Uh, I don't have those because I've already got the issues in question in these Essential books. But anyway, uh, when you look at the first like 25 or so issues, there are a lot of characters who are introduced who are almost immediately, uh, they resonate with audiences. And you look back retroactively and you say like, wow, there's a lot of characters there that I'm very familiar with, like Magneto or the Blob or the Brotherhood of Mutants or the Sentinels or the Juggernaut. And then there's a whole lot of characters who you look back and you're kind of embarrassed that they ever showed up in a comic book, like Meccano or uh, Eunice the Untouchable or Grotesque the Subhuman. Uh, these are characters who uh, showed up once and then they never had to show up again. Uh, there's an alien being who is responsible for Professor X being crippled, uh, Lucifer. I know that his alien species does show up in the 80s in the Avengers comics, but uh, that particular character, I don't think he ever shows up again. Uh, these are uh, characters who, uh, it's very clear that the creative team behind the series, they were just throwing out ideas and seeing what would stick. Uh, some of these characters, uh, obviously fans like them more than some of the others, so they brought those characters back. But then characters like the Vanisher, I'm pretty sure he doesn't come out back again until like the 1980s, I think. Uh, I know that he was uh, kind of this Oliver Twist-esque uh, villain in the Fallen Angels miniseries where he had a group of teenage mutants working for him and committing crimes for him and then he would reap the benefits of that. Uh, but in between X-Men issue 2 and Fallen Angels miniseries, I'm pretty sure he doesn't show up anywhere in the X-Men series. He might show up in like the Avengers or the Fantastic Four, uh, but I know he doesn't show up in the X-Men books. So uh, it's interesting that you have characters like the Vanisher who seems to show up once every 10 years and then you have characters like Magneto who I literally could not count the number of times that Magneto has appeared over the years. Uh, but uh, this is one of those characters who, uh, I think he was fine as a one-issue villain. Uh, it would have been cool to see him come back, uh, maybe try and uh, join Magneto's Brotherhood. Maybe he could seek out some help from some criminal psychologist uh, in trying to remember how to use his powers. Uh, something like that would have been kind of interesting, but uh, alas, they don't bring him back, uh, and once we get to characters like Grotesque or uh, uh, Eunice the Untouchable, you will probably uh, join me in saying, man, I wish we had the Vanisher here. Uh, but anyway, uh, not a whole lot to discuss in this issue. Uh, I do think the Vanisher's costume is a little weird. Uh, it would have been a fine costume if he was part of the Serpent Society, uh, but he has nothing to do with snakes, but his motif is very snaky, uh, but uh, I don't know why his costume looks like that. Uh, for all I know, he could have just worn a suit. Uh, it wouldn't have been very visually interesting, but uh, he didn't really have uh, anything uh, that would scream, this is a guy who teleports. So I guess Jack Kirby said, uh, screw it, I'm just going to have him dress like a snake. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's about all that I have for issue two. Uh, join me uh, sometime in the future, maybe later this week, maybe next week, where I will be examining issue three. It's going to be the first appearance of the blob. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, I hope that you guys like this video, and uh, I have been examining the X-Men.